Hello everyone. Today I will be giving a presentation on a single phase linear induction motor. We did this project for our energy conversion laboratory course. Hope you enjoy it. So the first thing that we have to know is what is a linear induction motor? Well, it's basically an advanced version of rotary induction motor that works by the same general principles but produces a linear force instead of a rotary torque. In a squirrel cage induction motor, the rotor is surrounded by the stator. If we take such a motor, cut it and unroll it flat, we will get a linear induction motor. This is a motor that we built for our project. Now, a, uh, a linear motor is conventionally powered by a three-phase supply. When three-phase AC voltage is uh, supplied to the windings, it creates a rotating magnetic field. This magnetic field induces an electric current in the rotor. Because of this current, another magnetic field is produced in the rotor. These two fields interact with each other and produces a linear thrust along the length of the motor. This is how a conventional motor works. In our project, we built a linear motor using single phase supply instead of three phase. The main problem of using a single phase motor is that single phase supplies do not produce a rotating magnetic field. Rather, it produces a pulsating field. Pulsating fields do not produce uh, force, so single phase motors do not start by itself. To start a single phase motor, we need to create a phase difference between two windings. So we have to use two types of windings that have different cross-sectional area. We add capacitors to one of them and connect the two windings in parallel. So what happens here is that the motor is supplied with a single phase voltage source, but two different current flows through these two windings. These currents have different phase angles because of the capacitor and their different impedance values. So be, uh, between these two currents, there is a phase angle of about 90 degree and the machine starts without difficulty. This motor has two major parts, the rotor and the stator. To construct the stator, we used laminated silicon steel E-shaped cores and attached them to make the body of the stator. Um, there are six slots. You can see there are six slots in the stator. We used iron cubes to fill the upper portions of the slots for better flux linkage. These are the iron cubes. We uh, put the windings in the slots, and there are two main windings, uh, this one and this one, and two auxiliary windings, this one and this one. We use 27 gauge wire for the main winding and 29 gauge wire for the auxiliary winding, which is just a bit thinner than the main winding. This is the winding diagram of the motor. Here we have our four windings. First, we have a main winding, then an auxiliary winding, then another main winding, and then finally we have an auxiliary winding. So if you look at the diagram, you can see that the first main winding is connected in series with the second main winding, and the first auxiliary winding is connected in series with the second auxiliary winding. So we have four terminals coming out of the motor. We need to connect these four terminals uh, so that the main winding and the auxiliary winding are connected in parallel. So we connect these two terminals together. Uh, before adding these two, we need to connect a capacitor in series with the auxiliary winding. I've already stated why we need to do that. So after adding a capacitor, we connect these two. And now uh, we can supply our single phase AC voltage in these two terminals uh, that we did uh, for a 240 volt single phase AC voltage. For the rotor, we used an aluminum sheet. This is very light and so it's much easier to move when voltage is applied. We will now see a demonstration of this motor. As you can see, after applying power to the circuit, the rotor experiences a linear force and moves forward. Since we used a single phase supply, the induced magnetic field is not uniformly distributed over the length of the stator. So, speed of the rotor is quite low. To design a motor with better performance, we created a simulation model in Comsol Multiphysics. We created two models, one with the exact parameters of our hardware project and another one with some improvement. We increased the width of the stator, doubled the number of turns of each coil and filled the gaps between slots with silicon steel instead of iron cubes. From the output of these two models, we can clearly see that the second model has a higher induced flux in its core. And uh, so we can come to the conclusion that these steps can be taken to improve the performance of the motor. So this was a presentation on the construction and working principle of a single phase linear induction motor. If you have any inquiry, please leave a comment below or send us an email. The address is given in the description of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.